back. It's been maybe like three days since I last filmed anything. Uh, cause I had to lend my camera out to someone. But in the meanwhile, I've done a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So let's jump into the game. I've taken the Husk AI and I've applied it to a humanoid plus a lot more. So when I come up here, you will see there's a dude and I'm gonna fight him. And I need to concentrate because it's actually kind of difficult. <laughs> Fuck, he's owning me. He's got two hits in. Here we go, nice dodge. Take that, you scumbag. So, you'll notice that he dodges me and parries me and like that dodge there. Like that dodge there. God, he's friggin' good at it. Dodge me again. Didn't dodge me then. Sucked in, nerd. Come on. No! Oh, fuck, you faked me out, that dog. Come on. There we go. Nice parry. Yeah, there's also a few other little things that I've added. I added some, like, blood splats on the ground. They're not actually tied to the particle system. I don't think there's a way to spawn decals from the Niagara um, particle system at the moment. But my workaround is just wherever the hit location is, we just do a trace down and spawn a decal there on a delay that's linked to how high from the ground it is. So if I hit him in the head or he hits me in the head, it takes a little while for these to appear. But if I get his feet, I'll just spam him. Then, yeah, they appear straight away. Yeah, it feels, it feels awesome. It kind of, it's challenging. And I've sort of been toying with it so that you can't just like spam attack and win. If he dodges or something, he'll usually follow up with another action straight away or parry. So, you know, if I just keep spamming at him, eventually I'm going to take a lot of damage. And just imagine you've got to defeat, you know, 15, 10, 20, 100 enemies without dying. You're really not going to sort of want to leave it down to chance. Unless you're super heavily armoured, in which case, you know, this might be viable. There is double hits, so you do get flinched if you're in the middle of an action, but it'll still blend out the animation. So you've got like half a second where you still kind of swing your sword, which is good. And I might make it so that if you're flinched and you hit, you do like half damage or something. It's kind of like Olympic fencing where you can both lunge at each other and if one person is one hundredth of a second earlier than the other, then they win. Even though in reality, if you were both stabbing at each other, you'd both be fucking dead. So I didn't want to take it in that direction. <laughs> tinkering with it for hours and hours, just sort of balancing it. There was a point where it was dodging or parrying every single attack and then following up with an attack that was perfectly timed and it just sort of wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't a game at that point, it was just getting fucked up by an AI. <laughs> so I'll open up the behavior tree if they have a combat target, then every 100 milliseconds I think it updates this you know, all of the combat information that's relevant. Um, same with the husk. So, you know, is it in combat range? Is it in attacking range? Is the target too close? And if they're too close, you know, we can do a kick attack or just a regular attack, but like more aggressive. This is, is the target facing me? So when I attack the AI, I don't want it to try and dodge or parry if I'm like facing the other way or not aiming at it because then you could just bait dodges and get hits in for free. Then target is attacking. So that says, is the combat target currently attacking me? And so these two variables combined sort of create a, you know, I'm in immediate danger if I can do something. And this just says, am I, or is the AI flinched? So if they're flinched, as soon as they're not flinched, you know, do something like attack or dodge or parry um, just to prevent, you know, follow up attacks and whatnot. Um, so back to the tree. So if it's in combat range, then strafe 
And it also sets the random strafe direction every one to four seconds. And then another one that I've introduced is to update the aim offset. So as the player, if your cursor is over the head of the enemy, you'll hit towards their head. Or if, you know, your cursor's on the ground, you'll be aiming towards the ground. But because the AI is just taking your or its target's actor location, which is in the middle at the origin point of the actor, then it's always lunging towards like the stomach. So this just adds or subtracts like 80 units from the Z axis of that. They'll sometimes be hitting your head, sometimes be hitting your feet or legs. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's good. That's good. That's like another little nice bit of variation. So in order from least important to most important, we have if they're in combat range, but not in the close attack range, then do a stab attack every so often um, between half a second and 2.5 seconds. Then if they're in normal range, like normal attacking range, just do a random melee attack with a little random integer thingo. So random number between zero and seven. And then, depending on what it was, it'll do either a regular attack, a stab attack, or just a dodge randomly. Just as a sort of, like, fake out. I figured this was just an easy, simple way to do it. You know, I can change, oh, I want less chance to do stab and more chance to dodge. So I just drag that over and, you know, change that up. So if its target is too close to it, then it's going to be backpedaling a little bit. So this just sort of adds a backwards vector to its movement. It won't go directly backwards, but it'll go more backwards than before. And the reason that's there is so that if it decides to dodge during this, it'll be dodging away. One of the reasons I put this in was because I had two AIs fighting each other. And at some points they just like come towards each other and sort of just like orbit each other like black holes colliding. If the enemy's too close, then it will either do a kick attack, which it's, it's most likely to do, or just a regular attack because it's sort of like a usually a horizontal swing out in front um or it will roll or dodge yeah and so this is where it started to get a bit hairy over this end so if the target is attacking and facing them then between 0 0.2 and 0 0.6 seconds perform a dodge or parry move so uh, it'll either do a step dodge or a parry or a roll dodge after they dodge or parry between 0 0.2 and 1.2 seconds they will do a random dodge follow-up which is either a regular attack a stab attack another dodge or another roll so one of the cool things that made this a lot easier was the action queuing system. So I don't have to tell the AI, oh, you've finished dodging, you can now attack. It's just like you're in the middle of a dodge and then the target is in close range. So do this behavior and because you can queue up an attack in the middle of a dodge, as soon as the dodge is finished, then it will do a melee attack. So it just saves so much hassle because I can sort of program it like how a human would play. As soon as I see the enemy attacking, I think, shit, I need a dodge. Even if I'm in the middle of an attack, you know, I just start spamming the space bar. So that's kind of what the AI does. Um, Cause there's no cooldowns on these. It will keep trying to do this until the condition fails. That's how the humanoid AI works at the moment. Alright, well, that's going to be it for this episode. Episode. Um, next time, we will work on the game. We'll find out next time, I guess. I've got no idea, to be honest. Anyway, thanks for watching, and with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.